everybody, it's Jennifer and Obi, or Obi One Cat and Obi, if you happen to follow him on Instagram. Today is Halloween. If you happen to be watching today, happy Halloween. I know you want to go. You can go. So today I want to share with you guys a personal story. This is one I've been hoping to record for a while, but just couldn't find the right time. Um, it's a personal story, so there will be a little bit of rambling, so I'll apologize for that in advance. Uh, but I offer it as a story of hope, perhaps for anybody out there who has a cat who has been tested positive for feline leukemia virus. So a little bit of background about Obi. We knew that we wanted a cat for a while and we thoughtfully did our research when deciding that we wanted to get an exotic short hair. So I had reached out to breeders across the state and actually over in other states as well, wanting to know more about their catteries, um, how their cats were raised, how long they had been showing. And we ultimately landed on uh, a breeder that's actually in our hometown. We were so fortunate. She had been breeding exotic short hairs for 30 years, which is a pretty long time if you think about how long the breed has been around. And she's also a physician and her husband is a physician as well. So she's extremely knowledgeable, she's smart, and she absolutely just knows everything there is to know about the breed. I felt really comfortable going to her and, um, and putting a deposit down for our cat. So Obi was born, he came home with us, and, um, and we adored him. And we took him in for his vaccinations, as we should. And at nine weeks, he was due for his FIV and FELV, or feline leukemia virus vaccinations. And I thought it would be a day just like any other. We would go to the vet and he would go and get his shots, whatever happens in the back room, I would get him back and we would go on our merry way. Um, but this, this was a different visit. So I gave him to the tech uh, and about 10 or 15 minutes later, it was a fairly long wait, they came back with the cat and the, um, the vet had a fairly serious look on his face and said, where did you get this cat from? And I was really thrown off by that. I didn't quite know what he meant, but um, I could gather enough to think and know that he, he was uh, sort of insinuating that I had gotten him from a bad breeder. Um, so I let him know that we had done our research and this was a woman in town. Um, and he followed with, well, you need to call her and let her know that your cat has feline leukemia virus and she really shouldn't be breeding cats. Um, a moment of shock that sort of hit me, you know, uh, not really quite sure how to react to that, not really even knowing what the virus is. I hadn't done my research before going in because this was just like any other vaccination. You just sort of go in and get it done and hope for the best. Um, so it just really threw me off. He did let me know that feline leukemia virus uh, in some older cats can sort of lay dormant and your cat could live fairly long and healthy for a while. Um, but it, that in kittens, it usually comes from the mother and it can be much more serious and fatal. Uh, and the life expectancy was gonna be about two and a half years. So that just completely floored me. I couldn't believe it. We had um, absolutely fallen in love with this cat. We had just lost two senior dogs and we were leaning on him as sort of our emotional support. Um, and, and he filled that void in the family. So I went through a period of denial, uh, got home, and then it turned into shock and, and upset and actually grieving and mourning. And so any of you who have had this happen to you, I know you're probably thinking the same exact thing, that this is how, how it happened for you. We started doing our research online, reading about what it meant, um, and it really scared us. It was really upsetting to learn that um, a cat that we imagined would be with us for 15 years is maybe gonna last two years. Um, and you actually start to like distance yourself from the cat or when you do interact with it, it's sort of like the time is more special and precious and um, it's, just, it's just a different interaction. Um, and so I did reach out to the breeder. This eventually turned from sort of grieving into anger and frustration. I felt like we had been betrayed by the breeder. We had spent a lot of money on Obi. I mean, he's a pure breed and, um, and they don't come cheap, I'm not gonna lie. So um, I reached out to the breeder and I let her know and her response was shock. Uh, and she said, I, that, that shouldn't be the case, our, my cats are okay. But the answer was sort of vague um, and I couldn't quite gather from her response if what she was saying was honest or truthful. We explored some laws. There's actually a pet lemon law out there. If you get a cat that the breeder knows is not healthy and you've paid money for it, you are entitled to a return and potentially more if it's considered a crime. Um, 
So that's out there and we considered it, but um, I think we were just wrapped up in our emotions too much at the time. About a week passed and I finally was able to step away from the situation and really think back on the bigger picture. We had gotten our cat from a reputable breeder. We knew other people who had gotten cats from this breeder that weren't having the feline leukemia virus test positive. Um, and I just knew in my heart that th this wasn't right. There's no articles out there, at least I couldn't find any, on the accuracy of a SNAP test or an ELISA test, which is used to, to test for, for this virus. Um, it's not like when you get a pregnancy test and they say there's like a 3% error rate. Like the, these tests, they don't give you that kind of transparency. Um, so I, I decided to take him back in. I took him to a different vet. Not to say I had anything wrong with the original vet, but he wanted me to come in in six months. And I, I felt sort of, um, in a way, attacked. Uh, I felt like he thought lesser of me because I had gotten him from a bad breeder, just in the way he had approached me with the topic. Um, I felt hurt. So I, I went to a different vet. And as soon as we walked in the door, they immediately said, oh, you have one of Larissa's cats. And I said, oh, you, do, you, do you know the breeder? And she said, oh, yes, we, we take care of all of her cats and she's wonderful, she's so smart. And I said, well, do you know that the cats have leukemia virus? And she said, oh no, that can't be the case. Let's get him retested. Um, so they did it and it came back in five minutes and it was negative. It was a negative test. And so um, all my fears washed away, relief. I actually cried, I was so happy. Um, the vet probably thought I was a total um, nutball, but it had just been a very emotional week and that was news that I absolutely wasn't expecting. You, you hear about um, false negatives sometimes, but not so much about the false positives. So, so anyways, I'm offering this as a story of hope for any, anyone out there watching this that has a cat that could be a pure breed or it could be a stray or it could be an animal that you don't know the background of. Maybe it came from um, a kennel or you adopted it and it came back with the positive feline leukemia virus. I would just encourage you if you have any doubts to um, get the cat retested because it, it was a weight lifted off of our shoulders. The, um, the way that we interacted with our cat had honestly changed a little bit. We were mourning a future loss um, and it was premature. We, we didn't need to feel like that. It's a time to, to play and have fun with our kitten. And, um, and I wouldn't want you to go through the same thing if for you it was a false positive as well. It was not something that our vet had given us any indication that there was a possibility of, but there is. There's a chance it could be a false positive. So anyways, um, hope that is a, a glimmer of hope for you all. And if you do have a cat with feline leukemia virus and you're watching this, just know that I, uh, I truly, um, I empathize. I know that feeling um, and I, um, I just, I, I think it's wonderful that you're giving your cat such love and attention and keeping it well and healthy. And I pray that your cat has a long life. So that's our story. That's Obi, he's healthy and happy and attacking little mice under my feet right now. So happy Halloween and have a good day. Bye.